Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new updates and new discoveries coming from the iconic galaxy known as M87 or Messier 87. The galaxy that became famous because of this. The tremendously massive, very powerful and extremely bright black hole that became the target of the Event Horizon Telescope that was able to capture various microwave emissions coming from this black hole, producing the image you see right here. In other words, representing the first ever image of an actual physical black hole, with several additional reworked images later also showing us things like polarized light coming from the vicinity of this black hole as well. And so in this video we're going to discuss some of the new updates about this image, we're also going to discuss some of the new discoveries about this galaxy, but even talk about some of the discoveries in regards to the jet coming from this black hole as well. And as always, all of the additional links and all of the additional papers are in the description below. But first, quick reminder. So what exactly happened here back in 2019? A team of scientists using various radio and microwave telescopes proposed a somewhat unusual idea. Why don't we combine the data from various telescopes to essentially create a kind of a virtual telescope? Or essentially a telescope that in theory could be the size of planet Earth. Can we actually capture something really far away and something relatively small by using this unusual technique? And eventually they realized that it should be technically possible, assuming that it also involves relatively complex math and algorithms that can then recreate all of this data based on just six points able to capture microwave light. And so for several years, a lot of these scientists were collecting data for this specific project they now refer to as Event Horizon Telescope. Telescope whose main purpose was to capture the picture or an actual image of a distant black hole. And even though most of us might think that the central black hole in the Milky Way galaxy might be the biggest one and the easiest to capture, it turned out that the galaxy Messier 87, located approximately 15 million light years away from us, contained an ultra massive black hole that was even bigger, even brighter, and had a lot of matter in the accretion disk moving even slower, allowing for much easier capture. The galaxy that was also known for its very beautiful jet pointed almost directly at us. And this jet, of course, is a telltale sign that there is a very active, very massive, and a very intriguing black hole somewhere at the center. And in 2019, we got the first image, which was of course one of the most exciting discoveries of the year, but also a few more reworked images, adding things like polarized light from various observations that took a look at some of the other frequencies in the vicinity. Here's actually another image of this region, visible by the Chandra's X-ray telescope, mixed with radio observations as well. And since that original image, we obviously also got the image from our own galaxy, Sagittarius A-star, although I guess it wasn't really as exciting as some of us hoped. You can learn more about this in the video in the description. But it looks like now, after just over 4 years, we have another update to this very famous, very iconic image. And this time, the black hole looks like this. Now, it is a little bit different, but it's essentially the same image, and it's probably a little bit more accurate. Because this time the scientists used some of the new techniques using artificial intelligence in order to generate an even more accurate image of what was taken by using various computational models and combining it with actual observations, or basically filling some of the missing gaps with data collected by the artificial intelligence by learning from other models. This specific model is known as PRIMO and it looks like it was able to achieve the highest possible resolution using modern observations and using modern techniques. In the process creating a much sharper image, with the overall width of the ring decreasing dramatically as well. Which by the way for the scientists is really important because in this particular case, this will allow them to test various theories of gravity with a lot more accuracy. And in order to achieve this, the scientists used analysis of approximately 30,000 simulated images of various black holes and trained the artificial intelligence to look for common patterns that could then be applied to M87. Something that can now technically be applied to other black holes including Sagittarius A star. Or in other words, in the next few months we might be able to see a much better picture of a black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. The image you see right here is based more on probability as opposed to actual physical observations. But this was just the first discovery about M87. The scientists were also able to work out something else about the galaxy itself. And specifically, by using completely new techniques and new observations, the scientists were able to recreate a kind of a three-dimensional model of this unusual massive galaxy. Once again, the galaxy that's about 53 million light years away from us, but that seems to be way way more massive than it should be. It's basically one of the most massive galaxies in the vicinity. 
and turns out that this galaxy is not really as spherical as we thought. Despite the photos making it appear elliptical and somewhat spherical, it actually seems to be basically potato shaped. Or triaxial if you want to be more scientific. And since this is a science channel, I guess I'm gonna have to use triaxial and not potato shaped. Now just to kind of give you an illustration of what we believe this galaxy to look like, previous research assumed it to be sort of like this. This is sort of what most elliptical galaxies appear to us from a distance. But in this case it appears as a perfect sphere. A somewhat diffuse sphere, but sphere nevertheless. But in order to assess the actual shape, the scientists relied on various techniques including astrometry by looking at the overall motion of stars inside the galaxy. But because this galaxy is 50 billion light years away from us, it's practically impossible to see individual stars. You can, however, detect swarms of stars and of course detect their motion across the galaxy. And so by using these swarms, they were able to do two things. First, determine that the galaxy is not spherical and that it seems to be rotating around a third axis, thus it's called triaxial, but second, also recalculate the mass of the central black hole, with the result resembling something like this. And interestingly, it seems to be spinning around its third axis at a velocity of about 25 km per second, which is obviously really, really slow, but detectable by modern telescopes. And so this is essentially what this galaxy is doing very likely a result of massive collisions back in the days. But this also resulted in a recalculation of the mass of the black hole. Before the scientists thought that maybe it's about 6.5 billion solar masses, the new calculations suggest that it's a little bit less, maybe 5.4 billion solar masses, definitely providing a bit of a discrepancy. And it's actually these discrepancies and the fact that this galaxy is not spherical can help the scientists figure out how the galaxy and the central black hole evolved in the last few billions of years. We don't really have these answers yet, but we probably will in the next few years. More importantly, this very accurate calculation of the central black hole can now help the scientists work out some of the other properties of the black hole itself, including its spin, something that's not very easy to measure. We know that these black holes spin, and some of them spin really, really fast, but the spin rate of M87 black hole, also known as Polehi, is currently not really clear. But apart from knowing the shape, knowing the mass, which is about 10 times the mass of Milky Way galaxy, and of course now figuring out the mass of the black hole, the scientists were also able to learn something new about the central jet. The jet that's approximately 5,000 light years in length and ejects material at nearly the speed of light, and more importantly, points almost directly at us, as a result producing a very unusual effect where the material seems to move six times the speed of light. You can learn more about this phenomenon in the description below. But just to clarify, the stuff here is not moving at faster than the speed of light, it just appears to do so. It's a kind of a visual illusion. But by using new techniques and new observations, the scientists also looked at some of the more details of this jet, in the process of discovering what sort of shapes it seems to form on the inside and what very likely causes all these unusual formations. Strangely enough, it seems to kind of resemble a double helix, basically DNA. In other words, by using very powerful magnetic polarization techniques, the scientists worked out that it seems to form these unusual helical structures inside the jet. And even though the jet should be weakening away from the black hole, a lot of these unusual instabilities seem to produce regions of higher pressure, which then encourage the formation of new helical structures. Or I guess in simpler words, there's some really complex magnetic interaction going on here that causes the jet to form very strange shapes and shapes that seem to last for thousands and thousands of light years. And how exactly this happens, to some extent is explored in this relatively recent paper, but technically still is not very well understood. It does seem to involve really powerful interaction with magnetic fields and a lot of various instabilities formed on the inside. Once again suggesting that a lot of the jets in a lot of different objects are mostly produced by very powerful magnetic fields much closer to the black hole or to the central region itself and the magnetic fields are most likely the result of the interaction inside the accretion disk, with a lot of magnetic lines in this case wrapping around in such a way that they form these jet-like formations. Although this is one of the bigger mysteries, so we're probably going to be coming back and talking more about this once the scientists figure out how exactly this works. And that's pretty much all we learned about M87 and the black hole and the jet in the center. Once there are more updates, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful portion t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.